my name is Karin Hellaby and I'm delighted to be here as a guest of Landau to film some videos for you showing techniques from my 10 books. I actually come from the UK and I have a shop about an hour and a half out of London which I've had for 22 years. I love teaching, my degree is in teaching and I have been teaching for 40 years. My books are distributed by Landau in North America but they are also distributed worldwide. The So Simple Pineapple book starts off with a technique called pineapple chunks. And this is a wonderful technique because it uses charm squares, the five inch squares that are pre-cut from fabric collections. For this technique, I'm going to use five inch charm squares. Charm squares are very handy to use because most of the suppliers for fabric actually produce pre-cuts and charm squares are one of the pre-cuts that you can use. I've chosen four fun jungle fabrics. These are the fabrics that I'm going to use. And I need to choose contrasting plain fabrics to use as a border for these uh, pineapple chunks. So the plain fabrics are going to be these, the blue, the green, and the orange. And I also have a yellow. Now on the fabrics, the plain fabrics, I'm going to take a pencil, a mechanical pencil and a ruler, and I'm going to mark an X. That's two lines, one from one corner to the other corner and the other from the opposite corner to that corner. So let me just put the pencil marks on and these go on the reverse side of the fabric. So not the nice side of the fabric, but the reverse side of the fabric. Sometimes with plain squares, you don't actually see where the reverse of the fabric is. So just choose the side that you like then. I've already prepared the green, blue and orange fabrics and the next stage is to actually place them right sides together onto the squares. So I think we'll put this green one on here and the orange one with the moons and a lovely blue one on this fabric here. Now I'm going to use some pins just to keep them together. It is a good idea to iron them together if you wish because that also helps to stick them together. The pins I'm using are the Clover fine quilting pins and I pin at right angles to the seam I'm going to sew. So I'm preparing four blocks with two pins in each block. Now, because I pin at right angles, it means that when I'm actually stitching the seam down, I can remove the pin with my right hand before the needle hits the pin. We're now going to move over to the sewing machine. I like to use a thread catcher on the machine to start sewing. So I'm just going to start sewing like this, and then I'm going to lift the charm squares that I've already pinned and prepared and I'm going to start sewing quarter of an inch inside from the line. The foot on the machine is giving me the quarter of an inch mark. When I come to the bottom corner here, I pick up a pin in my hand, one of these long pins, and that helps to keep the layers together as I get to the corner. One of the tips that I'd like to give you is to make sure that the charm squares that you buy are from either the same manufacturer or measure correctly. Uh, here you can see that I picked up two charm squares and one of them was a slightly different measurement from the other one. Now this means that when I started sewing, I didn't actually catch the fabric on the square underneath. So I'm going to start again with some new charm squares and show you how this technique works. This is the pineapple chunks. I use a thread saver on the machine so that I can work with a thread saver straight onto the fabric. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam and just stitch straight from the small fabric onto the square. Now approximately halfway down the side here, I then use the pin that I've removed from the side just to hold the corner pieces together like so. This helps with the machining and keeping everything correct. 
and you can see as the pin moves towards the foot of the machine, it's just helping to guide the fabric. Now I'm stopping just before the uh, edge of the charm square to pick up the next charm square that I've prepared and I'm going to stitch straight over from one charm square to the next. This will create a small chain of stitches and it's a saving technique in that you don't have to break the thread and restart again. Again, I'm removing the pin as I go along and using the point of the pin just to keep the corners together. Now I'm picking up the third one and doing exactly the same. And now the final square. Now rather than finishing off the thread on the final square, what I want to do is a continuous chain piecing. So what I'm going to do is to remove these squares from the one on the machine by cutting the chain apart. And we'll remove that little bit of fabric saver or thread saver. Now at this stage, I like to put the last seam that I sewed at the top so that I can actually continue down from the seam to the other side. I'm going to pick up a pin in my hand to, just to hold this in position. I don't like my finger getting in position there. That could be a little bit dangerous and I could sew over my finger. So I'm just going to put the pin in position there. And as you can see, I'm stitching away from the last seam and I positioned it at the top in order to stitch away. I pick up the next one and continue in exactly the same way, chain piecing every square. Once I've done the last square of this sequence, I then remove the previous squares. Now using this technique of chain piecing, I can actually surround each of those squares with a seam without once having to break the thread. And I'm now getting on to the last seam. So three sides have already been seamed and I'm just going to do the final seam now on the squares. Right, let's just check that all four squares have been done. We have one here that needs one more seam, but the rest have been done. So let me just cut this one apart from the others and make sure the final seam is done. Okay. 
And finally, I put my thread saver in position on the machine. Now this is my quick way of sewing seams round all four squares without having to break the thread. You can see that each square has a seam on all four sides. I'm now going to move over to the cutting board and show you exactly how these are cut next. The next stage of the pineapple chunks, once you've sewn around all four sides, is to pull the two layers apart. So I've pulled the two layers apart, remember like a tea bag, and I'm going to take the side that is marked with the X and a really good pair of scissors that cut to the point. I'm going to make a little cut here and that gives me an opening in the top layer only to cut through to the four corners. So here we've taken care of one cut. Now we go in the opposite direction, right into the corners, almost up as far as the stitching, as close as you can get to the stitching. This is why you really do need a good pair of scissors for this particular technique. I now have all four squares cut, so you can see that the triangles can open and they just need pressing. When you work with squares like this, and if you're a confident cutter and quilter, one of the tips I'd like to give you is that when you have marked the X at the beginning, what you can do is to take a small cutter and make a little slash just in the center of the X. This will mean that when you actually sew the squares together, you've got the little opening there to start cutting. I'd only recommend this for confident cutters because obviously you don't want to spoil the square and cutting with a pair of scissors might be easier for you. Once the squares have been prepared for cutting, they then need to be ironed. I'm using a steady Betty for ironing because I find that working with these bias edges it helps to keep them straight and they don't become distorted. The Steady Betty is an ironing surface which stays cool whilst I'm pressing and uh, keeps the pieces nice and straight and steady. As I press, I'm giving the little triangle a little tug and then I move it round like this and tug again. Now often with an ironing board, I find that this area gets very hot, but with a steady Betty, it doesn't. And you can see how those triangles are almost attaching themselves to the board, giving a very, very nice press. And then finally, just press it all over. All four squares need to be prepared like this, and then I'm going to remove the uh, little fabric ears here, the excess fabric ears. So they're going to be cut in line with the edge of the fabric. This will make it easier when you come to put the blocks together so that you can match. And then we have the finished square ready for the next stage. The next stage is to pin two blocks together. I like to place them right sides up so that I can see that they work well together. I then flip one over and it's important that the pinning is done at the two corners and in the center too. So flip one over, match the corners, put the pin in at right angles to the seam you're going to sew. So one pin is in the top corner there I then move over to the bottom corner, make sure that they're laying right sides together, corner to corner, raw edges to raw edge, and slip another pin into position. The pins are at right angles so that I can remove the pins as I go along. Now this can be a little bit difficult, this matching point here. Don't angst about it, just ignore the fact it could be difficult and pop a pin in place. 
Most of the time, probably 99% of the time, you don't have to worry about it because we're now going to do a half inch seam and that seems to match this point up extremely well. The half inch seam is done to help the pineapple blocks look more like pineapple chunks. So this particular stage always has a half inch seam. Let me take you over the machine to show you how this is done. The foot plate on the machine has a number of different lines. It is better if you could choose a line that is nearest to half an inch. Here we have a line on the Benina machine, which is between 3 8 and 5 8 on the plate of the machine, which shows me that's the line that I need to follow. So remember, this time we're going to do a half inch seam, not a quarter of an inch seam. Can you see that I'm using the pin in my right hand just to make sure that the fold of the fabric is lying correctly for the pineapple chunk underneath? Now I'm going to chain piece the next square so that I don't have to break the thread. Again, remember to follow the half inch seam allowance line on the foot plate. Once the seams have been sewn, I cut the chains apart, open up, and you can see the finished pineapple chunk square in pairs. Once the pairs have been sewn, the next stage is to actually press the seam. I'm going to turn it over, and this seam is actually pressed open. This helps to reduce the bulk of the seams. It actually makes a very pretty pattern on the back. You can see that little diamond pattern that's been formed on the back of the square. I turn it round and just press it again. So just to take you through this again, here is a pair of the pineapple chunks. The seam is going to be pressed open like so. Once it's pressed open, it looks like this. And then on the other side, you press it again to make sure you have the perfect join here. I prefer to use a half inch seam to join the blocks of pineapple chunks. This helps to reduce uh, the point here and helps to match it much easier and also when the quilt is finished when you look at the quilt they actually look like pineapple chunk blocks. I love looking at how people are working in my classes and if they are having problems with a technique then I try to think about how to make things simpler for them. This is what my books are about. I have uh, lots of multi-techniques in these books and I concentrate on single techniques in this book with lots of variations. During this series of videos, I'm going to give you samples of the techniques from each book. And I'd like you to work with the book and the technique at your own pace so that you can see what you can do and how you can vary them.